Two days ago, a very interesting article came out titled, World Bank Reveals Why Central Banks Are Dumping Greenbacks for Gold. We all know watching this video that gold is money and we actually determine how wealthy a country is on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they can print out. But even though we know that, I'm curious of the explanation the World Bank is giving on why central banks are dumping greenbacks for gold. So without further ado, let's dive straight into this article and make sure you watch this video until the end because we do know there was record amounts of gold being bought by all the world's central banks. But I'm curious to see if the World Bank revealing this is going to be as truthful as possible or if there's going to be some narrative shifting. I say that because gold and silver are a direct threat to the dollar. When you take that fiat, that fake worthless money that's backed by nothing and put it into gold and silver, you've taken the control and the power away from them and put it into your own hands. And they don't want you knowing that. So let's see the reasons of why they say these central banks are all doing it. Kitco News, a recent publication from the World Bank includes one of the most concise and compelling explanations of central bank de-dollarization and gold purchases to date. Now that right there just caught my attention and I'm starting to think this is going to be a very good video. Hope you watch all the way through. The Gold Investing Handbook for Asset Managers was authored by Kamal, which is a deputy managing director of the Central Bank of Uzbekistan and a member of their investment committee. It provides a comprehensive overview of gold as an investment, including its market structure and strategic asset credentials, as well as its trading, custody, logistics, and accounting practices. Much of this will be familiar territory for precious metals people, though the inclusion of statistics and studies right up to 2023 makes it a valuable update for even seasoned gold investors. Huh. So where the handbook truly stands out is its clear-eyed, unflinching analysis of the growing trend among central banks to reduce their holdings of U.S. treasuries while simultaneously increasing the percentage of their reserves allocated to gold. Quote, in the modern era, gold continues to play a critical role in the global financial system, serving as a hedge against inflation, a safe haven asset and a reserve asset for central banks, end quote. Alakazov notes in the introduction, quote, the role of gold as a reserve asset for central banks has been a significant driver of demand for the precious metal. The author lists several economic and geopolitical challenges that have served to bolster gold's position as a safe haven asset and ends with one that ignited the current push towards de-dollarization all emphasis mine. So, quote, the market disruptions brought about by the 2008 global financial crisis, the U.S. and China trade war, Brexit, and the COVID pandemic, as well as prolonged period of negative real interest rates and geopolitical uncertainties caused by financial sanctions imposed on Russia to freeze its foreign reserves, reinforced the strategic importance of gold as a buffer against financial instability, end quote. And that is exactly why we're going to see people opting out of the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. Russia actually just did that a couple months ago. They're not using dollars anymore. And why would they when the U.S. is just sanctioning them and actually freezing their reserves? They can't even get their own gold from us. Or if even to take things a step further, the whole entire BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and many more countries, they're like, screw this, let's just build our own currency, digital currency backed by physical commodities, so it's actually backed by gold and silver, and let's just use our own system, not even having to trade for oil or whatever. So he also noted the results of a 2022 World Gold Council survey in which asset managers chose quote, historical position and performance during times of crisis as their strongest reasons for holding gold. This is going to continue to uh, be one of the highlights of gold. People not trusting governments, not only just 
citizens, but also banks. And then looking at silver, and this is something I want you guys to remember. When we talk about gold, silver is pegged with gold in these same reasons. Of course, banks are going to use gold. It's, it's classified as actual money. Silver really isn't to that extent, even though it is still money and has been money since the beginning of man. And our money was actually silver, right? Constitutional silver. But beyond that, this works for silver. Gold only works in times of war and economic uncertainty, financial crisis. But then silver on top of it has its industrial uses. So whether you're investing in a gold or silver, there's plenty of reasons for both. And that's why I say diversify into both. Central banks in 2022 were more optimistic on gold as a reserve asset with 61% of respondents stating that they expect global gold reserves to increase over the next 12 months, he wrote. And then central banks stance against gold shifted in the period following the GFC, and they have been the net buyers since then, despite ever increasing gold prices after having been net sellers in preceding periods. And that's a good question to ask yourself is why are all the world's central banks, most powerful people, billionaires, all buying record amounts of gold right now when the prices are this high. Wouldn't you think that when something's most expensive it's ever been, that's when you wouldn't want to touch it with the 10 foot pole? But right now you see all of the banks, and I'm talking about record breaking amounts this past year bought by gold. We've never seen this much gold bought by all the world's central banks. And then I've made a video on all the billionaires on why there's so many billionaires that also invest into silver, like Jim Rogers, Bill Gates even, um, uh, Warren Buffett. There's so many different billionaires and very successful people that have been buying silver along with, you know, and some specifically silver. Some don't even touch gold, which is a pretty, I think it was Warren Buffett that mentioned that, that he doesn't like gold, he just likes silver. He says gold just kind of sits around, doesn't do much. It, gold still has its place. Silver does have something working beyond. So of course, Russia invaded Ukraine and just two months into the year with the United States and its allies levying the first wave of account freezes, asset seizures and sanctions against Moscow in the weeks a month that followed. You know, so if, think about this, you have another country freezing your accounts and your assets saying, no, you can't have your gold. You can't have your money. Imagine that. Imagine how frustrating that. And didn't it take like seven years? Um, I forget which country it was. Uh, it took seven years. So the section of the handbook devoted to geopolitical considerations goes into greater detail in how and why central banks are increasingly trading their greenbacks for gold. So the, uh, the, Reporter noted that research has established a positive relationship between gold prices and geopolitical risks. Now, we all know that, of course. In times of economic uncertainty, people are going to invest into safe haven assets. The, the research distinguishes between expected or perceived geopolitical risk and actual or realized geopolitical risk, concluding that the latter is more important in driving gold prices. That is actually something that I'm glad to hear. You guys know there's an S word that I absolutely hate. That S word is speculation. There should be no reason for prices to move so drastically and dramatically based off of just perception of, of the economy. I, I don't like how something that has fundamental value, fundamental meaning supply and demand being the main driver of the prices are being affected so much by people with, with a lot of times false information or misleading ideas that aren't even true most of the time being able to affect the price so much. Other research indicates that reserve managers consider gold to be a means of protecting against economic and geopolitical risks, and they therefore tend to increase their gold holdings during times of uncertainty or high geopolitical risk, while reserve managers in emerging markets tend to increase their gold holdings when there is a risk of financial sanctions. The author again underlines this point 
And in the research cited, quote, the largest increases in gold holdings by central banks often occur when the banks anticipate or face financial sanctions, he wrote. So the studies echo and the metric analysis revealed that both the value and the value of gold reserves tend to rise in response to sanctions imposed by major economies such as the euro area, Japan, the UK, or the US in either the current or the immediately preceding years. He also provided detail historical data supporting the assertion that in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, central banks that most fear Western sanctions are ones driving sovereign gold purchases. And I'm also wondering how much of this has to do with this currency that they are creating, because this currency is going to be backed by gold. So of course, you should be stockpiling lots of gold since this new currency you're creating because of the West and these sanctions and all, you know, these greedy little Americans sticking their hands in everyone's pockets. Of course, you know, that's going to play a huge reason. So, quote, recent sanctions against Russia have raised the possibility that other countries, central banks may shift their reserves from foreign exchanges into gold. Um, and then the author writes, quote, this is because gold is a physical asset that can be stored domestically, unlike foreign exchange reserves, which can be frozen by sanctions. And there we get the actual reason. Finally, there's some truth that is broken down so simply that you cannot deny this is actually what's going on. And this is why. This is why. This is because gold is a physical asset that can be stored domestically, unlike foreign exchange reserves, which can be frozen by sanctions. And with the U.S. sanctioning Russia and sanction after sanction, of course, wouldn't you want your own gold in your backyard compared to leaving it in another country that can freeze it and keep it from you for years upon years? Of course, of course. In half of the 10 highest annual increases in gold stockpiles since 1999, the affected country was sanctioned during the previous year or two. Other cases revealed that the increases occurred in response to unforeseeable political events, such as financial crisis or coup attempts, which is consistent with previous findings. Furthermore, gold purchases by active diversifiers frequently coincided with political, economic, or financial shocks, he added. This lends credence to the notion that geopolitical events influence gold price movements and may be linked to fears about future penalties. And then the author thinks this shift towards gold could have a significant implication for the global economy. Quote, if more countries start to hold gold, it could boost the price of gold and make it more expensive for countries to use gold as a reserve asset, end quote. Then he cites research that suggests this may end with the emergence of an entirely new financial paradigm, which is happening. And then here is the, the conclusion, or heading towards it, quote, there's an argument that in the aftermath of Russia's supply side crisis and the sanctions imposed on Russia, the world is transitioning from the Bretton Woods era, which was backed by gold bullion, to Bretton Woods II, which was backed by inside money treasuries with unhedgeable confiscation risks, or Bretton Woods III, which was backed by outside money, gold bullion, and other commodities, he writes, end quote. Then he writes, quote, his belief, or the, the belief, is that Russian sanctions create incentives for central banks to abandon the dollar in favor of gold for governments to cash in their dollar reserves for stocks of other commodities. What do you think those commodities are? So the author concludes the geopolitics sanction or the section by noting that the sanctions against Russia highlight the importance of gold as reserve asset. And the last quote, it remains to be seen whether other countries will follow Russia's lead and increase their gold holdings, he writes. Two years worth of data and analysis suggests they already are. And that is true because we had record-breaking amounts of gold bought by all the world's central banks since this was written, I guess, two years ago, since they say two years worth of data after they are. Very, very, very well-written article in that book 
I guess um, this is the book, the Gold Investing Handbook for Asset Managers, was, this was a great book, I'm, I'm, I mean, if this was only some of the highlights, then, man, this is a great book. Very informative. I was skeptical in the beginning, as you know, you heard me say, let's see how truthful they are. But it, it definitely hit a lot of the points on the head. I mean, it, it, when that last sentence, when they mentioned gold can be stored domestically instead of, you know, overseas where the country can freeze your asset and getting sanctions where you can't even you know, access your assets or your money. Of course, no one wants to do that. Would you want to do that? That's why we stack gold and silver in the first place, because we don't trust our own banking system, let alone another country. So yeah, it makes sense. I'm going to wrap this video up here. I thought this was very, very informative. The article's titled, titled World Bank Reveals Why Central Banks Are Dumping Green Bags for Gold. So yeah, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys later today or tomorrow morning. Happy Easter, everyone. Peace.